Good evening. I'm Tricia Crowley of the League of Women Voters of Champaign County. On behalf of the League, the NAACP, and the News Gazette, I welcome you to tonight's candidate forum. This portion of the forum is for the candidates for City of Champaign Township Supervisor. The candidates are Andy Kornstam and Pamela Borowski. Each candidate will be given two minutes for an opening statement. I will then ask questions submitted by the audience. Candidates will have one minute to answer these questions. At the end, each candidate will have two minutes for a closing statement. Um, and again, for you in the audience, we hope that you have questions for the candidates and uh, they will be collected and distributed. Um, shall we begin? By an earlier coin toss, Mr. Kornstam was um, uh, lucky enough to be the beginner, so if you could start. Thank you. Um, I'd like to thank the uh, NAACP Legal Women Voters, the News Gazette, for putting this on. This is, uh, this is important for the democratic process in Champaign, and, uh, and I, I, I appreciate it. Again, my name is Andy Kornstrom, and I'm a candidate for Township Supervisor in the City of Champaign. I've been a firefighter for the last 16 years, and it's through this, through this career that I've recognized a need in the city, and, and that need is for those in our community that are most underprivileged. The primary responsibility of the supervisor, as many know, is a general assistance fund. The general assistance fund is an avenue to assist those that are most in need throughout our community. Responding to calls throughout the city, whether it be northwest, northeast, southwest, I've recognized that there's people that are in need that don't know the avenue to get the proper help. Whether or not it's the mom who is unable to afford medication for her child, the homeless person who knew that there were no other options but to live on the streets, or the elderly family who had no means of communicating with the outside world, there's a need. And so that is why I decided to run for township supervisor. I believe that the supervisor has a responsibility to be the advocate and the liaison for those in our community that are most underprivileged. I think opportunity is available to in increase and enhance the services for our citizens, to increase the transparency for the township to the voters, as well as to offer more services uh, to citizens other than just those in need, seniors, youth, um, and citizens throughout the community. So I'm excited for this process. I think that, uh, that having a debate, a forum like this, and having a contested election is important for the voters, it's important for the citizens, and I appreciate this opportunity. Ms. Borowski. Thank you, and uh, thank you all for coming out this evening. Thank you to uh, the NAACP and the League of Women Voters for uh, hosting this event this evening. Uh, four years ago, I was elected by the people of the city of Champaign Township to take over a unit of government that was failing. Uh, the township supervisor oversees the budget for the assessor's office, as well as the general assistance program. Uh, when, I when I took over the office, uh, it was in pretty dire financial uh, condition, and benefits to the recipients of the general assistance uh, program had been cut well below what is mandated by state law. Uh, the only solution to that problem was to either raise property taxes on everyone uh, or go into state receivership or uh, cut and control spending. Uh, I was elected by the people of the city of Champaign uh, to do the latter, and I'm happy to report that uh, we've been extremely successful in this endeavor. My small staff and I work very hard to make sure that we serve every client in a fair and legal manner. Um, and we never turn away a person who is legally entitled to general assistance, transitional assistance, which is the program that was set up uh, previously by my, uh, by my predecessor. Uh, in addition to my full-time day-to-day uh, -day responsibilities, I also serve on the board of directors of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District, uh, which is another huge responsibility as we make decisions that affect the health and welfare of every person who lives in Champaign County. Uh, the township supervisor job it's a job that requires a great deal of time and attention, and I do my best to give 100% uh, to, to this job and um, take all of my responsibilities very, very seriously. Every person in our township matters, and any person who comes through our door gets attention, whether it's uh, through the general assistance, transitional assistance program that we provide, or if it's... Uh, uh, by referring them to another agency that can give them their assistance. Thank you so much. 
All right, we have some questions here. I understand that there is a budget surplus for the township, and what do you propose to do about that? Uh, Mr. Kornstrom, you can ask, answer first. Well, and I think that that's a very good question. I think, um, to me, being fiscally responsible equates to having a tax levy and spending that offering services to those in need. Uh, when you're taxing the citizens of Champaign and you're building up such a surplus that you haven't spent it, knowing that there's still citizens in need, I think that's irresponsible. So uh, as I said in my opening statement, I think that there's quite a bit of opportunity to increase the services that are offered as well as the scope of those services. Uh, numerous townships throughout the state offer senior services for their citizens, youth services for their citizens, and uh, some of those funds, I believe, could be allocated to some of those uh, particular areas of consideration. Um, I think to be a responsible supervisor and work within your means, I think it's important that you do that as well as provide the services that are, are um, expected by the citizens of Champaign. Ms. Borowski? Okay, well, um, there are laws that uh, govern uh, township gov <laughs> and the uh, allocation of the funds that we receive. Uh, when I took office four years ago, uh, we were almost broke, and uh, today we are not. Uh, we have uh, cut a lot of unnecessary spending, and uh, we have increased the allotment uh, by $95 per month, plus we are now uh, paying for medicines for the recipients of uh, general assistance, transitional assistance programs. So we are doing a lot. There are other programs that we have uh, impl implemented since I've been in office, uh, including a great fan giveaway every summer, and we've worked with the Unit 4 uh, Summer Youth Work Program as well. So uh, we are using the money. Uh, okay. Uh, and this question where you alternate question, uh, the answering of questions, so Ms. Borowski, you'll answer this one first. There are bills in the legislature which would abolish townships in Illinois. What do you think about that? Well, I think that there is a need for uh, our general assistance program in the city. I think that, um, you know, I not only oversee the general assistance program, but the assessor's office as well. And so the tax levy that I prepare each year I've uh, taken into account uh, all the expenditures that are necessary uh, to cover both offices. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we've been pretty frugal with uh, a lot of our spending. Uh, we try to make sure that our, our money is being spent where it needs to be spent and uh, not waste it on um, uh, frivolous things that uh, would make life more comfortable for the people who work in the office. So uh, I'll address more of that later. Mr. Kornstrom? Well, I think this is one area where Ms. Browski and I will agree. Um, th there's obviously a need, as I stated in my opening statement. Um, there's 20% there's of, of the citizens in Champaign live below the poverty level. Uh, in the News Gazette the other day, 500 people as of last year were homeless on the streets of Champaign and Urbana. So uh, if, if you get rid of townships, you're not going to get rid of the need of those citizens. And uh, I just... I, you're, all you're going to do is transfer the burden of the township onto the municipalities, which doesn't make sense. So um, I would completely agree that getting rid of township government uh, as we know it in the state of Illinois uh, would not be a wise decision. Okay. And uh, this one we start with you, Mr. Kornstrom. The township offices are uh, outdated and I think not entirely handicap accessible. If you're elected, would you, what would you do about that? Well, in 2009, uh, the township trustees, uh, at the um, urge of the, the supervisor, voted to sell the property uh, at the corner of Green and Randolph and pursue other options that are, A, a lesser burden on the taxpayer, B, handicap accessible, and as well, serve the citizens of this township better. Nothing was ever done of that. Uh, the current offices, as I stated, are a burden on the taxpayer. They're not accessible to many of the residents, and I don't think that they're very comfortable for those that work in there. So I would propose um, looking at any opportunity to uh, change the location of the offices to a more central location in downtown Champaign, but also to consider leasing somewhere downtown Champaign. Uh, in 2009, the buildings were estimated at about $400,000 in value. That would not only increase the uh, general fund of the township, but it also offer better services to the township residents as well as uh, 
as make it a better place to work for those that work in the office. Ms. Borowski. Well, as you know, we uh, work very hard to look for a, a suitable uh, uh, place to uh, relocate our offices. I agree that they are not the most uh, handicapped accessible, although the uh, assessor's office is, and whenever we do have somebody who's not able to make it into my building, we will meet them over in the assessor's office. So that's really uh, not a problem. Uh, the reason why we did not pursue uh, the, the selling of the property, and it was actually valued at uh, closer to 500000 uh, was because of the fact that um, the real estate market pretty much just fell out, and uh, the interested buyers uh, walked away, and uh, there was no place to relocate to. So that's why it was put on hold. Okay. we will start the next question with Ms. Borowski. Elected officials don't punch a clock. How much time do you think the supervisor needs to devote to the job, and how much of that should be at the office itself? Well, I come to work at 8.30 every morning, and I usually leave the office between 4.30 and 5, uh, Monday through Friday. Um, some evenings I'm here at city council meetings uh, or township meetings. Uh, as I said before, I'm also on the board of directors, which is mandated by law of the Champaign-Urbana Public Health District. So uh, we have a tremendous number of, of meetings uh, that go on with the Public Health District as well. So, and I am uh, responsible for being there. I'm one of three uh, board members for uh, CUPHD. So uh, I think it is, a, I know it is a full-time job. I put in a full day of work. Okay, and Mr. Kornstam? Uh, I would agree with, uh, with Supervisor Borowski. I think it is a full-time job and I fully intend to uh, to make it a full-time job. Um, there's been some partisan rhetoric that my, my job is a firefighter in which I work two-thirds of the time uh, after hours and a third of that time um, during business hours would prohibit me from doing this job. And, and frankly, I would actually argue the, op the opposite. Um, being out in the streets when I'm a firefighter is an asset to the supervisor's office. Sitting behind a desk um, pushing paperwork is not an asset. As a firefighter, I know what's going on in our community, and uh, I have every opportunity to work um, more than 40 hours a week, which I fully intend to uh, once elected, and to me, it's a non-issue, but I fully agree that it's a, a, a 40 hour a week job, and uh, I look forward to putting those hours in um, after April 9th. Okay, and for this next question, we start with Mr. Cornson. What will you do to make the township uh, better in the next four years? Well, as I said, I think one of the most important things is we need to expand our services. Township government is the oldest form of government, and frankly, in Champaign, it's pretty antiquated. Um, I think, first and foremost, we need to build better partnerships with social service agencies throughout the community. Putting a link on a website does not mean that you're building partnerships. What, what needs to be done is, is going out to these organizations, lending your hand to their, um, to their interests, and so that they will lend a hand to your interests. Uh, I believe that building these relationships will increase the services that are offered to the township as well as, uh, as lessen the burden on the taxpayers, both through cost but as well uh, through the work that's done by the township. Um, I think uh, doing something with the current property is, uh, is paramount. Uh, the real estate market has improved significantly over the last four years. Uh, the buildings are atrocious. The cost to the taxpayers is, is high. And I think that a wise decision would be to sell the property, lease somewhere else, and, and better serve the citizens. Ms. Borowski? Well, selling the properties and then leasing someplace else is not going to solve a problem um, for the township because uh, we figured the, it out. And uh, I was advised not to even consider leasing property just because of the fact that uh, the money that we would uh, uh, receive from the sale of the property would be exhausted within about 10 years or, or sooner, depending upon the price of the lease. So the only option was to purchase a, a property, and I, I uh, seriously <laughs> investigated it, even to the effect of I was working uh, with uh, the uh, fire department and the neighborhood services department to possibly uh, uh, buy a building together, and uh, it just never, ever transpired. Okay, and um, I think there's a, one question here that's a more probably to educate the audience uh, than a uh, question, but can you describe what the benefits are if someone does receive general assistance and how you determine whether they're eligible? 
Ms. Borowski. Uh, yeah. Um, the individuals who receive general assistance, transitional assistance, have to be physically or mentally incapable of working due to a life-threatening chronic condition that would make them unable to hold down any type of a, of a job. Uh, they have no income coming in. They do have certain statutory uh, um, requirements. They have to have a, uh, a link card. They have to have applied for a medical card. They also have to be in the uh, appeals process for Social Security disability. And that's the primary uh, requirement right there. They have to have exhausted all of their um, uh, unemployment benefits as well. So those are the, some of the legal requirements to uh, be eligible for, social, uh, for uh, general assistance, transitional assistance. And, and what are the benefits that you get? We uh, give the maximum amount, which is allowed by law, which is $245 per month. Plus, we give out, uh, we pay for their medicines as well, as, as long as they are on the approved list of medicines. Okay, Mr. Cor Kornstrom, you want to add anything to that? Um, well, that was a good answer. Obviously, general assistance is, is statutory, so there's, there's not a lot of opportunity to waiver from the process. Uh, I would uh, want to be confident that the process is the least prohibitive as possible. And that includes, frankly, uh, having to go to a building next door to fill out the paperwork that, that needs to be um, filled out just to receive assistance. The one area of concern that I have, since I still have about 30 seconds, and Ms. Browski answered most of the question, is that um, my concern lies with those that are denied general assistance. In the end of, uh, for a period in 2012, 56 people um, received general assistance, were approved, 74 people were denied. And my concern is the fact that 74 people then aren't eligible for general assistance, but what are they eligible for? What was done for those 74 people? Um, so I, I'm afraid that those are the ones that fall through the crack the most and, and um, it would be a primary concern of mine. Okay, and uh, we have come to the end of our question, so we're going to have the closing statements. And with the closing statements, Mr. Kornstrom starts and Ms. Uh, Borowski ends. So, Mr. Kornstrom. Well, again, I'd like to thank everybody involved in this process. I think uh, the democratic process is a fantastic opportunity to uh, vote for those that you believe will do the best job uh, in the position that, that, that uh, you're voting for. Um, Municipal elections do not generally have a very big turnout, and so it's important that those of us in this room are engaged and understand the issues. I look forward to the opportunity to serve the township. Uh, th this is a fantastic way to truly serve those in need in our community, much like I've done for the last 16 years. I've been a public servant as a firefighter in the city of Champaign. Uh, I believe that, that I can expand on my service to the citizens of Champaign through the supervisor's office and offer a better understanding um, to them of what the township uh, provides. I think uh, my experience on the board of directors with the United Way, uh, a board member on the Neighborhood Services Advisory Board, as well as um, being a mentor through Champaign Schools and Bigs and Blue, uh, offer me a unique perspective on some of the needs that the citizens of Champaign have, and specifically those that the township um, and the general assistance fund work with. So. I look forward to those opportunities. I think that uh, so far this has been a fantastic campaign, uh, has not been negative, and, and um, Supervisor Borowski and I have enjoyed, I think, to uh, the opportunity. Ms. Borowski? Well, I uh, have certainly enjoyed my last four years as, as supervisor. Um, it's been a great experience. It's something I feel very, very passionate about. Uh, we've done a lot of, of good things uh, for the people in our community, the people that have been ignored. And uh, we do actually uh, serve on uh, several uh, different uh, committees and agencies throughout this, uh, the community. And I personally have uh, been extremely involved with uh, See You at Home. And I've spent a, a, a couple of cold winter nights and a, at least one hot summer day walking a park uh, to raise money for the homeless people in our community. So. Uh, we are involved and we care very deeply about uh, the people from our community. We uh, also, one of the things that I did uh, initiate was a, an emergency assistance fund uh, uh, for people who uh, just need a little hand up to, to get their life back on track. And uh, that's been a very successful program. Uh, 
uh, it doesn't get utilized all the time, but when people come in, it is there for them, and uh, we do everything that we can uh, to make sure that we give people an opportunity to get their lives back on track and get back to work and start building a life for themselves. So um, I've, uh, as I said, I've enjoyed this job. I've, uh, I hope to uh, uh, continue with it for the next four years and uh, look forward to it because I have a passion for it and a passion for the people that we do serve. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. Um, we're gonna take a short break now while we change for the next debate, which is the Parkland um, Board of Trustees.